There's one last area I'd like to take a look at for this intro to Houdini course, and that is with rendering. So let me give you guys a, a short, brief way that uh, I go about rendering. Again, just like texturing, I could make an entire series or an entire course dedicated to rendering, but I just want to keep it overall and broad. So here is a quick way that'll um, get you rendering really quickly. Um, I'm going to go to these lights. I always turn up the samples by a little bit. I find that three usually tends to be enough. And this is going to be responsible for our soft shadows. It basically acts as a multiplier to the overall light samples in our scene. If we go to our out context, you'll notice that we have our Mantra IPR node that was automatically made for us when we hit render up here. And in this uh, mantra node, we have all of our render settings. So I'm actually going to make a new mantra node. Let's type in mantra. And this is what we will use for rendering. Now we have our camera one, which is good. We have our render current frame, and we're going to just render out one frame in this instance. And if we go down here, we have our output picture. So this is where it would save out to. Let's browse for our render directory, and we will call this Alfred Render version one, and we will save this out as a EXR, just like that. And now if we go to our rendering, here is our main render settings. You wanna change this rendering engine to physically based rendering. That will give you the latest and greatest technology I guess, <laughs> available for rendering this out. Um, anyway, just, yeah, I would just change that. And the main thing to concern yourself with, um, again, this could get a lot more complicated than the way I'm explaining this, but if you've never really rendered very much and you don't really know what's behind these settings, um, as a rule of thumb, in your scene, if you have motion blur or if you have depth of field, you'll need to turn up these pixel samples. Because our scene does not feature motion blur or depth of field, if that's the case, just leave them at three and three. That'll usually work for, for most circumstances. The thing that you would want to adjust after that are these min and max ray samples. So I'm going to, um, actually while I'm testing out these renders, I'm gonna go up to our override camera resolution I'm going to say, let's do half the resolution. This will allow us to test our renders a lot more quickly. And let's hit render. But before we hit render, let's select our mantra one node that we just made, like that. And now that we are here, we can uh, then just select a region to uh, render with and test everything out. So there we go, we have this. Also, as we are testing out our renders, let's turn off displacement so that we can save ourselves some time. So just turn that off temporarily. Let's go back to our out context. And to uh, highlight a region, hold down shift. I'm just going to focus on this region alone. And now we want to switch our rendering mode from progressive to a bucket renderer. So instead of seeing this progress over time, I just want to see it give me the final quality. So I'm going to hit this little check, uh, little checker box thing up here. And now it's actually just going to render out like that. Okay, so let's actually change our region maybe to the face. That might be a good spot. And what you want to do is you want to make your min and max the same value. So let's make it one and one for right now. This was a very low quality render. And let's just gradually increase these numbers until we land on a good value. So if I do four and four, this is what it'll look like. We still have a lot of grain in these areas. So let's bring this up to maybe eight and eight. Let's see what that does. Eight is still grainy. Let's double that at 16 and 16. And you'll notice that it's taking longer to render now, but we are getting a cleaner and cleaner image. I still see some noise down here at the chin, so let's do 32 and 32. 
and it's now taken about twice as long, but we have a much cleaner result. Let's actually test out another region. Let's test out this area. I know that for a fact that this is probably going to be one of the grainiest areas potentially. And I still see a bit of grain in these spots. So let's change this to maybe 48 and 48. Let's see what that does. All right, and at this resolution, I believe 48 might be a good thing to run with for right now. So we know that 48 is a, a decent area or a decent spot to put these samples at. I'm actually going to bring my resolution back up. So I'm going to check off this override camera resolution. And now it's going to still keep that region, but it will render that out at a higher res. And now that we have this, we can take a look at our grain and see what we have. And in general, we're looking pretty decent. There's still some grain happening along here. So we could turn this up even more just to be safe. And so that's what I'll do. Let's turn this to, oh, I don't know. Let's say, um, let's say a maximum of, I don't want to go too high, maybe like, 64, 64. And by doing that, we'll definitely have a clean result. So now that we know the number of rays to give us a fairly clean result with this scene, the next step is to adjust our noise level and to turn our min ray samples to one. So I'm gonna turn that to one and let's let this render out again. And this time it's going to render out a lot more quickly. Basically what's going to happen is that we have a number of rays between one and 64 that it's going to render out. And depending on this noise level, either Mantra will decide to add more rays to a particular area and say that the noise threshold has not been met, or it says, yes, the noise has been met and this particular spot doesn't need any more rays. And all of that exists between one and 64. And by doing that, it should clean up some of that noise. It's basically utilizing more of these samples. And it's being adaptive about the whole thing, which is cool. That's still too much grain, so let's turn this noise level down some more. Let's point zero zero two five. Let's try this. And with this point zero zero two five, I'm willing to say that that is about the right uh, sensitivity that we need to um, enable us to not get a noisy render. All right, and that is the main thing that I would do for rendering this out. There's obviously a lot more to rendering, but if you don't know how to render, follow those steps that I just did, follow that whole process that I just did. And in most cases, you're going to get a render that's rendering out as fast as it can be uh, without you know, getting too complicated and um, without spending too much time trying to mess around with all these different settings. All right, I'm going to send off a full render now instead of just this region. So I'm going to hold down shift and do the whole thing. And then once the whole thing is done rendering, let's take a look at the final result. And now that we've finished our render, we are at about 10 minutes for a clean result, which isn't too bad. We are doing this at 1280 by 720, by the way. And if you want to change the resolution, you can always go to your camera, this cam one, and under view, you'll have the resolution right here. Alternately, you could also go to the out and select the mantra one, and then do the override camera resolution to whatever you might need. Now, I just made a big mistake by making an adjustment because we are in this IPR window. So we actually just lost that whole 10 minute render by me adjusting this override camera resolution which is kind of a bummer. <laughs> and so as a matter of fact, what I would recommend you doing is not rendering in this render view section because it's very easy to do what I just did. 
Uh, instead, if you want to do a final render, I would recommend uh, changing your path, which we did in this images section, and you can hit render to disk and that will render it out. Or you can also say render to mplay. And by rendering to mplay, it'll actually bring up a separate window that is separate from your Houdini scene session. And it'll actually render it out with this. Uh, again, I would recommend doing that for a final render. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit escape here. If you want to save out this image, you can go to File, and you could say Save Frame As, and you can simply just browse for it like anything else. Let's say we go to our hip, and we go down to Render. We could, well, actually, it's not finding uh, hip because it doesn't recognize where we are. Let's go Desktop, Alfred Project, and we can go down to Render. And now we can say, Alfred version one, we can say a JPEG or whatever. That's one way to do it. And here you can always right click and say save frame and do the same thing. And if you're saving to disk, then you've already determined where you're saving out to and what that file name might be. With that all being said, this wraps up our course. Thank you so much for watching. I've had a really fun time teaching all this stuff to you. And hopefully I've taught this stuff in a way that was more exciting. I know that every single time I jump into a new program, the first few steps are usually the hardest because it just it, it's very difficult to get through some of these basics. But my hope is that our project with Alfred has been more exciting than it would have otherwise been just by going one by one through some of these things. Anyway, if you like what I do, be sure to check out Houdini for the New Artist Part 2, and in that I'm going to go over an introduction to effects, uh, as well as check out other areas of the interface that we have not talked about yet. So again, thank you so much for watching, and until then, have a great day.